I'm Emily. I'm Tom. I'm from Australia. I'm from England. And welcome to our channel. So we're sat today in the Italian mountain range, the Apennines, Apenninos, in a beautiful Italian campsite. The last time we saw you guys, we were in a little town of Melahis. The next day, we woke up at about six o'clock in the morning and we left to catch the only local bus. We finally ended up in Granada that morning. To get to Italy, we thought we needed two PCR tests. So we had planned our route very specifically to try and get PCR tests that would give us results before we got to the airport. You're so deep in there. You shove it all in, and then when they pull it out, it comes out, like it keeps on coming out. You're like, it's gone so far in there. <laughs> so we needed our results in 24 hours, and we booked this expensive PCR test, thinking that we would get the results in 24 hours, but it was actually 24 hours from when the results would get to the lab and the results wouldn't get to the lab until tomorrow. So we wouldn't receive the results until Wednesday, but we needed our results by tomorrow afternoon. Luckily, there was a guy who spoke English and was also traveling to Italy for some reason, he told us that we only needed to get a antigen test done. So we changed the booking, we organized a refund, and they saw us straight away. Now we're waiting for our results, so fingers crossed neither of us have COVID. We waited for our results and they were negative. So our bus from Granada to Madrid was about five hours and we arrived in Madrid about six o'clock in the evening. There are all our fans greeting us as we arrive in the city. We get to Madrid, we're staying at this hostel called the Central House Lava Pies. The hostel is so beautiful. It's so modern. We have our own bathroom in our room. That's and my bed pod. <laughs> that is your bed this pod. This is our balcony. It's one of the nicest hostels that we've ever stayed at. I had maybe the best breakfast I've ever had at a hostel. Because it was our last night in Madrid, we decided to splash out and we chose a fairly fancy restaurant to sit at, which served some Spanish tapas. So we recommend this dish by the waiter. <laughs> it said pan con tomate. So it's literally <laughs> pan con tomate. <laughs> so the next day, we found this amazing food market. We went there for lunch. You would go to the different food stores and you'd pick yourself up like a tapas from each one. That was pretty lush. Mm. So we rushed home, we got in a cab, we caught our flight from Madrid to Florence. So we got on the flight, we've got this lady sat next to us who's probably about our age. First thing Emily says pretty much loudly is, I'm sorry, Tom. She's engaged. I didn't expect her to speak any English. She spoke perfect English, she spoke perfect <laughs> Spanish, she spoke perfect Italian. She immediately asks to change seats and they say no. So we just sat, I'm sat in this awkward spot all flight next to this poor lady. Trying to be quiet so we don't piss any more people off. Later on in the flight, we just ditched the row and went to one of the empty rows. And actually from that point on, it was wonderful. I love flying. And then we touched down in Florence at around 5 p.m. After missing many trams trying to work out the <laughs> ticket system and not having anything checked when we come to the country, not even our passports. No. We get on a tram into the central station and we walk to a hostel. So since our last video, a few things have changed. We said we were going to come to Florence and go camping straight away. We paid Florence, turned out it was going to be much more expensive to go camping straight away. So we stayed in Florence. We haven't been filming because actually we make a lot of friends. Emily wasn't feeling too great and I was trying to finish off our first vlog as well. We didn't, we weren't filming very much, but today we're going to go camping. Our friend Sebastian, our, our roommate, is actually going to give us a letter to Bologna, which is going to take us a lot of the way there. Before we do our camping video, we want to show you our favourite place in Florence. It's just in here. Welcome to San Lorenzo Market. There's what so many it? fruits and vegetables that I have no idea. What is it? I have no idea. Sebastian's now the new star. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting all, the, all this uh, channel. Oh, the royalty! <laughs> we really like this place because we went to three restaurants at the back and had very cheap food for Florence. We love the food, we love the vegetables. Yeah. We love markets. We love markets. We're here for breakfast this morning, but we've been here for lunch a lot. Yesterday we went here and the antipasti was crazy.
songs that are better than this first one? Yeah, one of those four songs. Um, Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I got the squid bruschetta with anchovies on it. Ow. <laughs> It's a little bit bitter, but still Italian. And I don't have to Seven to eight. Seven to eight. Seven and a half. I say seven to eight. Yeah. I went and bought myself a chocolate croissant. Okay, that's the best part. Yeah. Probably like an eight. So that was our final morning in Florence. Sebastian, who you saw in the market, offered to give us a lift, which took us to Bologna. Then from Bologna, we got a train from there to Reggio Emilia, waited to catch one of the local buses. But eventually we arrived in the town of Castelnuovo de Monti, and we changed buses there. He like introduced us to the next bus. <laughs> yeah. We got another short bus. To the beautiful little village of Severezza. <laughs> It's so much more comfortable than the one that we were staying in Spain. It's a grass pitch. We have a tree, which is not that covered, but uh, we brought the rain with us yesterday, but it's nice and cool. So we're not going to be like dying of heat. The bathrooms are right there. We're going to go set up our tent now. <laughs> That's the view from our tent. Let's get some beds set up. This one has a hole in it. These are replaceable mattresses, but bevel on. They only take a few puffs to inflate. That was 10 puffs. Yeah, the air I put in is just, it's more powerful. Also, than... you just made out with me. My mouth between us. Right. On the theme of blowing up, I also have a blow up pillow. We decided we had different needs when it came to pillows. And we've gone for an air pillow, which I find way too solid. I've gone for a foam pillow. But I have, because it's so, it's nice and soft, but I have to put it on top of something, otherwise it's way too low. Thermarest foam pillow. This is home sweet home. Let's fill it up. What do you say? And there was big mountain biking. It's starting to rain, but the rains are here. Hey guys, welcome to our Italian chateau. It's a studio apartment. So we've got the bags here and the beds here and the light there and the doors there. We're on this small little camping pitch it's at the top here, but we're going to go to the market to see if they have gas canisters and we're gonna buy some food to cook for dinner tonight. That's basically just a taco right now. Watch the magic. <laughs> it looks like you've got a beak at the front of it. So tonight we thought we'd show you how we cook our food when we're camping. For the seventh night in a row, basically, we are going to be having pasta. We found these really nice looking sausages, pasta sauce, barilla pasta, two zucchinis, Bougettes. one capsicum, pepper, <laughs> and two chilies. Chilies. I usually do the food prep. Tom usually does the pasta cooking and the actual sauteing. We use this beautiful little stove we've got. Turn it. 
And there it goes. Oh yeah. Actually, the first thing we need to do is fill up this with water. So how was your day? That's interesting. You did what? Tom's always trying to take the one chopping board that we have. Yeah. For the lid for the past. That's right. But I won't allow it. This is how I chop every vegetable. If I do more cooking videos, then you'll just see me like small dice every. First sign the boil there. Tasty. Something we found in Italy is that the Italians cook their pasta pretty al dente. Like almost to the point of it being crunchy. One restaurant, the macaroni was on the verge of being solid. I love to boil water off so I retain some of the starch and pasta. He likes boiling everything off. If something is not crunchy, he does not approve of it. It's nearly done. It's rainbow. It looks like a very healthy meal. Yeah, it's done. Take it off. Blah, 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 it's done. Yeah. Learn there's a trick to this. Otherwise, all the pasta falls out on a gutter. I use this little oven glove. I'm gonna hold the lid. I'm gonna mix in some of the sauce. I have a six pack. Genuine Italian ragu. Mommy, Throw it all in. Nice. So this goes in its little insulated. And that keeps it warm while it's waiting. Now we cut the sausages. Look at that. Sausage. Yum! Ah, giant bud. <laughs> <laughs> If the tripod could sing, it would be singing. When you the raise moon, me oh. up. I thought it would sing when the moon hits the sky because it's an Italian song and we're in Italy. Tripod, not Italian. Tripod only knows Westlife. <laughs> <laughs> that sauce was definitely not meant to cover this amount of people. <laughs> Oh, so cool. Now this looks a lot like a tripping chair. This is so much food. If I could create some overflow system. Oh, but you've got so many ants in your plate. Just have to eat the ants. So overflow system's actually working quite well. Yeah, <laughs> this is actually working <laughs> so well. Blast, blast. Always try and have some left over for lunch the next day. Do you want some pasta? Yeah. Thank you. Done. <laughs> it doesn't look amorous. It's really tasty though. Is that actually? Mm. It's really tasty. For camping food, 10 out of 10. The sausage makes it if we didn't have the mm. sausage. Ingredient is king, right? Really amazing meat. Nice fresh veg. So we've noticed that there's another couple over there. I thought they were brother and sister. But they could just be flirting. <laughs> oh, did they just kiss on the face? <laughs> and then he got excited and they walked off. Summer romance. I think I give this an eight and a half. Mm. Now we got to do the washing up. Good night. Good night. Night. What we really want to talk you through now, we've learned quite a lot about camping in Europe in the heat with no car. We're going to share some of that with you now. <laughs> we just went and did some amazing high ropes. They were some of the hardest high ropes I've ever done. They were super fun. We did three hours and we didn't even touch <laughs> maybe a third of the course. And the difficult ones were really, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> this is the one that scares us most because there's definitely a step missing. Tom even did the hardest route and something so unexpected here in the mountains. We yeah. had no idea that this rope course, which is supposedly the largest outdoor park in Italy, just a kilometer from our tent. <laughs> so the meat of our video. We wanted to talk to you about what we've learned so far camping in Europe. We still want to do some more camping in Europe before the full trip is over. We haven't got it perfect yet. So we want to say what we learned so far. So we're going to do five main things that we learned so far. So here are five tips of camping in Europe that we've learned so far. We're trying to save money by backpacking around Europe 
camping. Could be a coronavirus thing, but no one seems to be doing this right now. Everyone in these campsites, if they've just got a tent rather than a camper van or like mm -hmm. a cabin, they've got a car so they can bring a lot more equipment. Or a bike. Or like a, a bike. And that could be the type of campsites we've chosen. We're definitely not in sort of multi-day trek areas. These campsites are mostly fitted out for camper vans and people with cars. Mm. So that brings us to tip number one. When you're doing research, look for campsites that have grass pitches. Our first campsite was a gravel pitch. It was way too hard to sleep on and to sit on and to rest on. It was also really hard to assemble our tent on it because the ground was too hard. So none of our pegs stuck in the ground yeah. unless we malleted them in and we had to borrow a mallet because obviously a mallet is a lot of weight. So yeah. we're not using it. It was them. very uncomfortable. Do your research, find grass pitches. Tip number two. Shade. Get shade. Make sure there's shade. <laughs> Coming from England, this will not have crossed your mind probably. In both places, after about 10, 11 in the morning, being in the tent is unbearable until like, let's say seven or eight at night. We've tried to film this section earlier on. You saw that we were in a covered area and then we thought, oh, we'll bring the camera over to the tent. Maybe it'll be okay, but it was so hot. We just, we just literally couldn't film. So even though we knew that, that was gonna be one of our lessons, we still made that mistake. Yeah. Today. <laughs> <laughs> you need to find a campsite with shade, if possible a pitch with some shade. So our tent as you can see is green, it's also quite low and it was a, a light lightweight tent so it's, it's just over two kilograms. But everyone else here and they are able to pack a lot more because they're they've got vehicles, have higher tents, which are lighter in color as well. A design of tent like that allows more heat to go to the top and reflects more heat away. So if you can, probably try and get a tent that's lighter in color and a bit taller. But the best thing about this campsite is that it has communal tables, which are under shade, which is where we spend basically the hottest part of the day. Which brings us to tip number three. Try find a campsite that has plenty of communal spaces. First campsite we stayed at, had a pool which got ridiculously busy mm. and also a restaurant which really wasn't situated near our tent and, and we didn't know whether we had to pay to sit there. The place we are now has tons and tons of trees but also it's got these beautiful shaded areas like the place we filmed in earlier today. Tip number four. Cost. We wanted to come camping because we thought it'd be cheaper and that is true. It is cheaper. However, the pay for a picture at a campsite is not that much cheaper than a hostel. Where we are here, how much should we pay? For? Yeah, 58 or 56 euros. For three nights, we think they probably made a mistake because that seems crazy cheap. It was cheaper than hostels. All hostels here have been 20 plus euros each yeah. per night. But then you've got to factor in the fact you're buying all this camping gear, which lots of people already have. When you're backpacking, it's got to be light as well. So that adds to the cost. However, the way that we've saved money mostly when we're camping is through cooking. Neither of us really like cooking in a hostel kitchen. And actually a lot of the hostels that we've stayed at so far have had the kitchen closed because yeah. of coronavirus. Since we've been camping, it's been a lot more cost effective just to buy a few ingredients each day that goes towards our lunch and our dinner. And we really enjoy cooking yeah. on our little stove top. So we we've saved a lot it. of money. So we talked about buying gear. That sort of brings us to point five. What's point five? Oh, that's right. Okay. It's so much easier and it makes the tent a lot less messy if you gather things that you know that you're going to use daily and put it in a bag at the front of the tent. When we were staying in Spain, I always had sunscreen, a hat, my book, my wallet, my phone in a bag at the front of the tent. That way I didn't always go back and rummage through my bag and make the tent really messy because we've only got a three person tent for two of us and both of our big bags. So there's not much free space. That's a good there. point. If you're trying to enjoy a holiday as two people, make sure you get at least a three person tent. So I came here with a few pairs of shoes, but what I didn't come with was thongs or flip-flops. I bought a really, really cheap pair. I haven't let them go. They're so easy. As soon as I leave the tent, I just pop on my flip-flops and I flippity-flop to the bathroom or to the wash area or to the showers. They're the best 
things I've bought so far. But thanks for listening to our five tips, guys. The next time we see you might be a bit different. I wanted to go back to UK for a festival. Tomorrow morning, we go our separate ways for probably two, two weeks. Well, I quarantine for most of that. And I'm heading to the coast of Italy and then down south and then probably to Greece by the time we meet up again. We will see each other in Greece. Yay! Mm -hmm. I want to make like a mini blog about my experience going back to the UK from an amber country. And I'll shoot some stuff in Italy, but I can't promise it'll be anything great. <laughs> see, see you next. next. <laughs> Bye. Harder. More. Can you please work it a little more? Can you lift your leg higher? Can you lift it higher than your head? Higher than my head. Yeah, I want this to represent the real you. Put those lips out as if they're actually not attached to your face.